destroying the powers that withhold good things. We've enjoyed, we've been enjoying the seasons of good things. Today, there are powers that withhold good things, that the power of God is present to waste in our lives, in our reign of miracles, in the name of Jesus. And we're taking our test, our test for the month, Matthew 7, 11, and Psalm 84, verse 11. Matthew 7, 11, please let me have it first. Matthew 7, 11. Matthew 7, 11. He said, if you then, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask of him? Your Father will give you good things today in the name of Jesus. And I'm here to announce to you there are so many good things that our Father has given to us. That is why we are here this morning. Let me have Psalm 84 verse 11. Psalm 84 verse 11. Psalm 84 verse 11 For the Lord God is a sun and shade The Lord will give grace and honor Say amen, amen. Say amen. amen Say the Lord will give grace and glory And no good thing will, be, will he withhold from them that walk it uprightly No good thing will he withhold I'm here to announce to you that there is a God that is saying this morning, I cannot withhold good things from you. So any power that has been withholding prophecies in your life, any forces that have been withholding your expectation, withholding the things that our Father has released into your life, those powers are crushed in the name of Jesus. I want you to open your spirit because every power that has been carrying out evil assignments in your life, this service declared their end in the name of Jesus. Now I want to show you three areas. I want to show you three things that cannot be withheld. Three areas that cannot be with three areas that th good things cannot be withheld. That things cannot be withheld. Number one, three areas. Number one, he said, withhold not good thing. From where we read in Psalm 84, verse 11. He said, The Lord shall give grace and glory to us. No good thing shall he withhold from those that walk uprightly. The Bible says in Proverbs 3 verse 27 Proverbs 3 27 Proverbs 3 27 No good thing shall he withhold Proverbs 3 27 Proverbs 3 27 Withhold not good Withhold not good from them to whom it is due Withhold not good These are three things that cannot be withhold in your life from now forward in the name of Jesus He said withhold not good from them to whom it is due When it is in the power of their hand to do it That means there are powers that withhold good things from people there are forces that withhold information from people, that withhold ideas from people, that withhold breakthroughs from people, that withhold open doors for people, that withhold wombs not to conceive. I remember Jacob crying when he had problem with his wife. He said, am I the person that have heard their womb from that your womb could not conceive? That means there are powers that hold wombs. There are powers that withhold jobs. There are powers that withhold breakthroughs. There are powers that withhold hold marriages. There are powers that withhold open doors. In this service, such powers are destroyed in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to somebody that will say amen. Every power that is withholding good things from your family, let those powers be wasted in the name of Jesus. Any power that have withhold your joy, I decree, I bring destruction upon such powers in the name of Jesus. Say, oh God, my father, Whatever good thing that be withheld in my family, be released now by fire in Jesus' name. So he said, You cannot withhold good thing. It is wrong for you to withhold good thing from people when it is in the power of your hand to give it. When it's the power of your hand to give job to somebody, don't withhold it. Don't ask the person for sex before you give him the job. When it's the power of in your in the power of your hand to mark the script of your child, don't withhold it by demanding that you must sleep with that child for you. It's a wickedness that passes to generation. 
These are some of the wickedness that is going on. Don't do it. When it's, when it's in your power to release somebody that is not guilty, don't demand him to pay for a bribe. Don't demand him to pay extra money or to corner you to do something where he refused. You withhold the pair. You might think you are smart, you have refused to release that person. Devil will also hold something in your family. Devil will also hold something in your children's life that he will not agree to re release. And the day is coming, the person will cry, release, release will not come. Because some time ago you withhold that which belongs to someone because it was in your power you refused to release it. Whatsoever that is yours, that has been held by government, I decree by the power of God that is present, let those good things be released now in the name of Jesus. If there be any ancestral power, if there be any household powers that have withhold blessing, withhold conception, withhold open doors, withhold destiny helpers, refuse them to come your way, I decree. Let destruction waste those powers in the name of Jesus. I command your expectations be released in the name of Jesus. Shout release, release. release, release. Hallelujah. So you don't withhold good things from people when it is in the power of their hand to do it. The Bible says in Proverbs 11 26. Proverbs 11 26. He said, He that withholdeth the corn, he said, The people shall cause. Proverbs 11 26, I said, not 24. He that withholdeth, he that withholdeth, he that withholdeth the corn, the people will cause. He that withholdeth the corn, the people will cause. I prophesy, whosoever that is withholding your supply, any devil that is withholding good things, withholding your money, withholding your breakthrough, withholding your promotion, I bring destruction upon those devils in the name of Jesus. He said, he that withholdeth the corn, the people will cause. He that withholdeth the corn, the people will cause. He that withholdeth the corn, the people will cause. He that is withholding good things from people, people will cause. The Bible permits you to cause whosoever that is withholding good things from your life. The Bible combined, he has given you an open check for you to destroy anyone that is withholding that's your expectations. And here decree right now, anything that belongs to you, maybe in the hand of men but withhold by devil, maybe in the hand of God member withhold by winches, maybe in the hand of your brother but withhold by household enemy, let those forces be crushed and your expectation be released in the name of Jesus. Please, I need a capable hand in that fit, in that scripture. Praise the Lord. Number two, withhold not to give. Withhold not to give. Withhold not to give. Proverbs eleven twenty four to twenty five. The three things you shall not withhold. Withhold not to give. Proverbs eleven twenty four. He said, "There is he that scattereth." But yet increase it. They receive Proverbs eleven twenty four. There is he that scattereth, and yet increase it. And there is he that withholdeth more than it is meet, and it tendereth what to poverty. When it's time for you to give, learn to give. He said, the liberal soul, the generous person, the, any person that is ready to give at every point shall be made fat. The person will eat in abundance. And he that watereth shall be watereth also what? Himself. You cannot be a stingy person and expect people to be given to you. You cannot be withholding. Anytime they say give, you get offended. I have discovered the best time that Satan speaks is anytime they say give. I have experienced it. That is one of the areas I suffer most in Christianity. I never suffered in times of healing, in times of uh, prayer, in times of other areas. But the area of give, once they say give, something in me will get offended. Something in me will feel they want to steal from me. Something in me will tell me well, I have not finished eating, talk of to give to somebody, I beg. Something in me will suggest, why not give small? Why not look for the 31? Why should I give? Who is God for me to give God a whole 1,000 naira? Let me, I can give empty and 1,000 naira. 
I can give Doctor twenty thousand naira. I can give recharge card. I can give cable thirty thousand. It's no, there's no problem. I can give bundles. I can give them two thousand naira just for me to watch things that make me laugh. But to give, who is God? Who is God to me for me to give you a whole one thousand naira to give to God? No. What is good for God is five naira. What is good for God is ten naira. And you make sure you look for the one that is very dirty to give to him. What is good for God is 20 naira. At least God can say, I'm trying. I used to give 5, five naira. But now I've tried to give 20, 20 naira. God can say, I'm doing hard. But when they say, how many people that have need from God, you will raise your two hands up. He said, oh God, heal me. Oh God, deliver me. Oh God, do this. But God said, when I, there's opportunity for you to show me love, you refuse. When there's opportunity for you to show me you care, you refuse. Now you want me to take away your pains. Now you want me to heal your heart. Now you want me to take away your disease. Now you want me to open doors for you. Why don't you go to the people that you feed that is your God? I love the scripture that one time I read it. I saw that scripture, I started crying. He said you have offered your, 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 giving your best offering to your gods. You have given your best offering to your idols. He said, now you have problem. You run to your idols. Idols could not help you. Now you are running back to me. God said to Jeremiah, tell them, go back to the same God that you have offered your cow to. You have offered, tell him to, to, to save you. Tell him to save you. What are you withholding from God? Until I discover it was devil that was talking to me. If they say dance, they will not speak. But once they say give, a voice will appear. Until thank God bless a pastor, one that was listening. A pastor was preaching. He narrated the same story. That he was having the same experience. Anytime they say give, a voice will tell him, don't go. Don't go, thieves. Don't go. Don't give anything. Don't mind them. He said, I thought it was myself talking. I never knew it was Satan himself talking. It's the power that wants you to remain in one place. It's the power that wants you not to receive good things. It's the power that is fighting your open doors. It's the power that, that does not want good things to come to your hand. Why? The Bible said, There is he that scattered yet increased. But there is he that withhold, refuse to release. But the Bible says, Tender it toward poverty. It comes to poverty. The Bible put it like this, the way you will understand. In Ecclesiastes 11 verse 6. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 6. Please let me have it very fast. Ecclesiastes 11 6. Ecclesiastes 11 6. He said, In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening with not withhold not thy hand. In the morning so thy seed. In the evening, do what? The same day, withhold not thy hand. For thou knowest not. Tell your neighbor you know not. You don't know what will happen that day. For thou knowest not. Whether shall prosper. Either this or that. Or whether they both shall be alike. Give, let me have amplify of it. I like the one amplify. Put it amplify. It's very simple. Let me have the amplify for Please, the person sitting there giving me scripture. I want the scripture to respond at the same way I speak. Amplify. Amplify version of it. In the morning, sow your seed. And in the evening, with, not, withhold not your hands. For you know not which shall do what? Prosper. Whether this or that, whether both alike will be what? Good. Why should you give? You don't know the one that will bring the open doors. You don't know the ones that will bring the lifting. I have seen where they ask to give a seed. I step back for 100,000 I gave. And behold, they say give 2,000 and behold, 2,000 is the one that that catapult the whole thing begin to rain. I've seen where they say 2,000 nothing work. I stood out I came and said, no God, I want to push myself out. I want to give up to 200,000. And I step out. That is what opened all the doors. At times, anytime you hear give, don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. Daddy said something here on Sunday. He said, if you want to understand the principle of giving, he said, show me the womb that will conceive without a sperm. Show me the womb that will conceive without a sperm. He said, by the spermatozoa of the Holy Ghost, we saw in Mary. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. Something too was deposited. The word conceived. He, by the word he con she conceived and brought forth. A man has to give something. A man has to give his sperm. The woman has to give her womb. True or false? So the life is all about giving. If you hate giving, you cannot enjoy abundance. Say every power. Say it. Say every power. That discourages my heart. Not to give according to the will of God let such powers be wasted in my life say oh God my father 
whatsoever that is due to God that I withhold that also withhold what I'm due for from man say in your mercy oh God forgive me release mine because I've released yours in Jesus name number three of that category withhold not correction from the child three things you cannot withhold withhold not correction from the child Proverbs 23 13 withhold not correction from the child withhold not correction from the child Proverbs 23 verse 13 Proverbs 23 verse 13 Proverbs 23 verse 13 Proverbs 23 verse 13 withhold not correction from the child for if that beateth him with the rod he shall not do what? he shall not die thou shall not withhold correction from your children thou shall not withhold correction from your children when a child make mistake correct that child correct the child and make the child see that what the child have done is wrong don't tell me that that you cannot be hey, I, 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 I met a lady some time ago that was I think three years ago we are saying something say, since I was born my father has never my father never spanked me nobody has ever beat me I looked at her I said can I tell you truth he said, yeah. I said, I said, if I tell you the truth, will you be offended? He said, no. I said, that is why you are useless. I said, what did you finish telling me now? He said, I don't get you. I said, but I asked you if you will be offended. You said you won't be offended. I said, that is why your marriage has wrecked. I said, do you want me to tell you the truth? I said, your father destroyed you. He said, but my, my, my father taught us beating. I said, that is, that is the example of the beating. They didn't beat you. Your husband just threw you out of your matrimonial home. And because of you don't have manners. How can a woman marry and say, I cannot say I'm sorry? What am I telling him sorry for? That he is who? That is one of that is one of the reasons why your father should pay you very well. Came you to your mother and said, I am sorry. Our blood and Oyibo blood is not the same. Our blood stop us somehow. So you have to use stubborn cane to chase that stubborn heads for the child to hear. I didn't say you should kill the child. But a little spank will make a child to think well. You are not wiser than God that said it. Don't withhold correction from a child. You cannot see a child going out of order, pretend as if you didn't see it. Your child is in your heart and is twisting his head. And you are asking me, don't you, that mommy is a star. Or is bobbing some hairstyle that is making him look funky and crazy. It's a sign of distraction. That is how it's starting. It's a sign that that child does not concentrate in the classroom. As the teacher, the teacher will tell you. A child cannot go to school and be carrying phone to school. And carry extra shoe. And carry extra hair ribbon. And carry extra things. That is why as a mother you have to check your children's school, school bag often. Or you assign somebody to check. In case you discover something, somebody told me one day in my house, he said, your daughter is going to school with extra shoe. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, I saw extra shoe. I said, but I checked the school, yeah, school bag yesterday. He told me where they used to carry the, school, the shoe and keep it somewhere else. When they're going, oh, some of us did this thing when we were children. Our good parents help us to remove it by little spank. And when we prove stubborn, they will ask small, small pepper to eat to make you see clearer. All the demons will advise themselves and run out of your body. They will do meeting and run out of your body. Because you wouldn't want to experience such discipline again. And they show me, I pretend. And I watch. She didn't know I'm watching. She stepped down and look, went where she collected the shoe. What, the, what is she trying to tell me? The school shoe you bought for me is old, old school. Like bear. So the one I bought for her for, for church is the type she, she So she is telling me what is right for school. And now, and the question I ask her, is, is this school you, shoe you are going to learn or book you are going to learn? And I collected the shoe from her and showed her ancient and modern. Yes, I did. My parents disciplined me. And I told her if you dare it again, I will deal with you. In short, she apologized and apologized and on her own repent and open her bag. Show me all the extra things she hide in the bag. And if those, the, one, the person that said never showed me all that thing she hid in the bag. And she brought all of them out. 
She returned back to school. She came and knelt down. Say, Mommy, please, I'm really sorry what I did. He said, Not that you beat me, that, that, that's why I'm saying sorry. You told me there's a word you said that was ringing. You said, These things are destruction. He said, Do you know something? He said, Once our teacher leaves the classroom, we bring out this test, we use it, we don't read, we don't read books, we'll be using my friends, we use it to play. Since that day, you beat me. They asked me, What of the things we asked you to bring? He said, My mother has found, she beat me thoroughly. And since then, she told me they are no more my friends. And that is it. You must discipline your children. You must monitor what they wear. Your child cannot just like naked and you call it style. And for some of us parents that is encouraging them to wear those sexy clothes now. You have a child. Yes, the child is 14 or 13. But he has developed calves. He has developed hips. He has developed everything that will attract a man. You must not allow him wear, allow her to wear the the things that the one that has can get body that does not have such features. You don't expose her. Am I talking to parents here? It's not everything you allow your children to wear. It's not everything you allow them to wear. You start teaching them how to dress decent now. Some things they wear is a no. You don't wear things that show all the curves of your bum bum. If you must wear it, look for blouse that will cover your bum bum side. Teach them to dress decent. Teach them that you must wear skirt. You must cross your knee. You must not expose your body. That is that place is called private part. It belongs only to your husband. It does not belong to anybody. Let's start teaching them now. Our children wants to get naked. All the clothes they are importing out from the country, from from abroad to Nigeria, is clothes of nakedness. If he doesn't tear in the hand, he tear the back. He doesn't tear the back. He tear the heart. He doesn't tear the heart. He tear near the breast. He doesn't tear near the breast. He tear by the bum bum. He doesn't tear. By... All of them. If it's not enough, they slant it. Some of them will help you to tear it small. Some of the school uniform. I was there in a the school. I went to see, do something. I saw a parents and and uh, and the school distance fighting. What is the problem? The school uniform, the girl says she will not wear it. That the school uniform is old school. It's too big. The, the, the mother will instruct to give us normal school uniform. She will go and meet Taylor on her way, sew so it to tight. So that she's going, all her cops will be showing. So the mother now went to the school. When the mother says it's a school that changed her children, the mother knows she's lying. So the mother has to follow her to the school. And discovered the school says it's not true. This is the size we gave to her. She's the one that went to reduce it at that small age. That is telling you, by the time she will get to puberty, she will fly. And it's that flying that is causing all the kind of wickedness we saw today in our environment. How many virgins will you find in the church? How many virgins? Where is the joy and the glory of a virgin? How many virgins is in the church today? How many virgins is outside there? Everything is gota. That's why there are so many miscarriages. That's why there are so many barrenness. That's why there are so many atrocities. Most of the delays you see in marriage is caused by men that women sleep around, collect demons and enter into their body. These demons block all their destiny and introduce lateness in marriage. Because the man you are, sex is exchange. Sex is what? Exchange. It's exchange. Sex is blood to blood. It's blood to blood. It's covenant. All the spirit that is inside the person's body is entering your own. All the one that is in your own is that that's what the Bible said, and the two shall be what? One. What made them one? Sex, love making. Say, I understand. So, when you want to open your leg before any man, find out whether conversion spirit is in that man. Find out whether the spirit of arm robbery is in that man. Find out whether the spirit of anger is in that man. Find out what is in the person. Am I talking to your spirit? So don't withhold correction from your child. Don't see your child going the wrong way and pretend as if you didn't see it. Fight it. Pray it. Discipline it. Talk it. Shout it until that child become it. Say, so here. It's not only praying. Talk it. It's not only talking. Shout it. If you weren't the one, two of you will run up and down. Run. 
By the time he noticed that my mother is not getting tired, one day we said, I don't, Mommy, I don't tire. I have seen that you are not ready to quit. The child will step low. Tomorrow, the same child will come to you and say, Thank you. Why? Because today I'm a better person. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, four things that empower Satan to withhold good things from people. Four things that empower Satan to withhold good things from people. Four things that empower Satan for, to withhold good things from people. Number one, disobedience to heavenly instruction. Disobedience to heavenly instruction. John 3, verse 3. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's a heavenly instruction. Except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's a heavenly word instruction. There are things you don't disobey. Nebuchadnezzar has been disobeying so many things. But when he dared to disobey God, he saw the serious consequence. He saw it. Saul was having fun, doing havoc to the church. He was killing here and there. But until he collided with the instruction of heaven, he gave him blindness. There are things you don't disobey. If you are smart in disobeying everything, don't disobey heavenly instruction. And what is heavenly instruction? Except a man is born again. You have to be born of God. You were born of your parents. Now God wants you to be born of God. Before you are born of the flesh, now God wants you to be born of the spirit. Before you were born of the corruptible, now God wants you to be born of the incorruptible. Are you hearing me? Before you were born of the earthly, now God wants you to be born of the heavenly. You are not the same. You must obey it. When I see people telling you, oh, pastor, pray for me, I need money. I say, money is not your major. Your major problem is salvation. Salvation is the greatest. What is the benefit of money? And your soul goes straight to hell. Jesus Christ put it this way in John 3 16. He said, For God so much loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever that believeth in him should not perish, but have something. That is what you call good thing. Have everlasting life. A life that after living here on earth, you will also enjoy the life hereafter. Some of us have chosen the life of now. You don't want God, but you want his breakthrough. You don't want to serve him, but you want his favors. You don't want to worship him, but you want his blessing. You want his prosperity. You want his defense. You want his protection. But you don't want him in your life. But at the end, you will want him. But, but then, it will be too late. The Bible says, Whose ever name that is not written in the book of life, Revelation 20:15 shall be cast into the lake of fire. That is the second death. You should not disobey. Disobey everything you want to disobey. Don't disobey heavenly instruction. In all your getting, get salvation first. In all your wisdom, let Christ be in you. In everything you want to achieve in this life, I've said it many times, my father, a wise man, told, give God all of us, hold your ears. We are seven in my family. He said, these three, you shall not make mistake in life. He said, one, he said, salvation. He said, two, education. He said, three, marriage. He said, these three, you shall not make mistake or meet in, the, meet in this earth. You need salvation here and after here. You need education here for you to be useful, earthly relevant while you are still on earth. You need what? Marriage. So that at your age, old age, Pastor Beverly will not come and take care of you. You should raise your own family. You should have your own children. And anyone here that does not have his own family, whatsoever that is withholding children from your womb, let those things die and children appear in your hands. Every woman must enjoy the joy of children. It's a good thing to experience. Is a thing of joy. And any power that says you will not experience it, I cause those power to die in the name of Jesus. 
So you must obey it. The Bible says in John 10.10 10, The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life. In my life is my power. In my life is my righteousness. In my life is my grace. In my life is all my glory. In my life is my blessing. In my life is my safety. In my life is money, prosperity, everything you need. You need that life. Don't joke with it. Ask your neighbor, are you born again? If you are not born again, stand up wherever you are. You must be born again. He put it this way again in verse 6 of it. In verse 7 rather. John 3 verse 7. He said, Mother not, be no surprise I said to you. You are a scribe. You are a Pharisee. You are a pastor. You are a worker. You are everything in church. But be you not surprised I'm telling you. If you are not born again, <laughs> your case don't finish. We're not talking about burning of Nigeria. You must have the life of God in you. If you don't have the life of God in you, God will no waste time to judge you. You are going straight to hell after life here. It's a truth you must obey. Say, I have obeyed it. Obey. Number two, five areas that Satan, five areas that empower Satan to withhold uh, good things from people. Number two, not walking uprightly with God. Psalm 84, verse 11. Not walking uprightly with God. Psalm 84, verse 11. Not walking uprightly with God. Psalm 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shade. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing. Tell your neighbor, no good thing. Will he withhold from them that walk what? Uprightly. Do you walk uprightly? When they say to walk uprightly, what do you mean? Somebody to walk blameless. Somebody that is not a hypocrite. Not a psychophant. Not a psychophant. Before everybody here, you are Christian. The other side, you are another religion. The other side, you are going to spiritualist. Somebody that cannot stand on his God and defend his God. There are people that God cannot show up in that situation. Because if God did delay for one second, you have denied him. God cannot show up in the life of such people. Let me show you the kind of people that God show up in their life. The kind of rugged life that we lived. No transport to go to church. Which year yet transport? Habeg at the trek. The five night away while hold on for offering. The only thing we used to hold in hand to go to church is only offering. Once you have offering, nobody we don't pray for transport. And I don't know how. I have never trekked from my house to church. One way or the other, divine escort, divine elevation must come to give you lift. Somebody, somebody, hey, where are you going? I'm, Enter, let me drop you. At times like this, ties this, I don't know. He said, I run, I run this area, I've been seeing you. Where are you going? He said, don't worry. No, my, my ties is not for Enter, make I just drop you. I said, no, but I know. He said, no worry, enter. Who are those guys? That, that is God showing you faults. There are people God can never show up because before God delay one second, you have kicked God out. And such people can never see the hand of God talk of his finger. When you, you are doing something that is right and you call God, God refuses to answer. What do you do? What do you do? That is when you know real believers. We saw it in Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. They say, oh king, we are not careful to answer you. If he refuse to answer us, no problem. We will not stay bow. The Bible says the anger of the king went 100 degree. He told them increase the fire. Some of us only seeing the fire is increased. Okay, I'm sorry. King, you don't, that is not exactly what I mean to say. It's just that you're not listening well. See, they don't care. They were pushing them to the fire. They didn't ever care. That is what I mean to walk uprightly. When God delay, what do you do? You look for alternative. We saw it in Daniel. 
He did justly. Still, they threw him into the lion's den. What did he do? Some of us on getting to the door of that den, on the lion's den, he said, Okay, king, please, instead of me to die, let me even be the priest to be, be your priest to be worshipping your gods. He never gave up. That's what the Bible says. Such people, no good thing will be withheld from them. What did Joseph do, did or do when he defended God? He said, how can I do this wickedness against God? Not against his master. He said, your husband has given me everything. This only one thing has he withheld from me. He said, how can I do this wickedness against God? The woman looked around. He said, Mumu be this. Where is the God there? The master returned. He tried to explain. The master told him, Shut up! And took him to the cell. If it's you, what will you do? You stayed there for one week. They didn't bring you out. Oh. Some of us will begin to blaspheme God. I believe that Jesus may we talk better to him. But he did not. He did not. If it's you, what will you do? When God delay, what will you do? When God refused to answer, what will you do? Some of us will quit. Oh, you enter the ministry of church ministry. Mountain on river ministry. Mountain on ground ministry. Mountain on sea ministry. That's how you be going from one place. What do you do when God delay? When God refuse to answer? Do you tell him God? I'm not careful to answer you God in this matter. All I know is that I'm normal. My body is normal to conceive. Faithful is it that I have said it, you will do it. If I don't conceive today, I will conceive tomorrow. And I know you will do it. If you can break the protocol of a woman that is 100 years, that has passed, passed, passed monopause, and she conceived, that's nothing that is hard for you to do. I'm not shifting my ground. You are God, you cannot lie. If you didn't lie to those ones, you cannot lie to me. I cannot shift my ground, God. Can you then look at God and say that? I remember when all my friends, I quit all my friends, I couldn't have any girlfriend anymore. Because I discover, I'm sorry to say it, I'm, I'm on air. All my girlfriends in the name of born again Christians, all of them have one boyfriend, man friend, in disguise, we are in courtship, we are getting married. When I received salvation by the mercy of God, I was saved. When I saw this thing, I said, No. I said, I can't. They said, No, we are just cutting. I said, You are cutting, and this blood is coming out. You want me to continue the cutting? I said, No. I said, If this is marriage, I'm not cutting. I said, My husband cannot see my body till after wedding. If this is what courtship entails, I will not do any courtship. So this is the definition of my own courtship. If a man appears to me, I tell you, wait, let me go and consult the manufacturer. If I go to the manufacturer, he say you are the right product. Because the manufacturer sees everything inside the, inside, the, inside the very product. If it's fitting for me, then I'll call you back. Then we'll go and see my pastor. Then we'll go and see my parents. That is our courtship. As we are seeing them, the marriage rights are going on. That is the courtship I did. You are cutting. Look at you that is cutting. How many men has caught you? Look at all the blood on your body. In the name of the cutting, they are cutting you. This one has caught you. How many DNC have you done? At the end of the day, the cutting didn't work. It kicked you out. If you look for a way to kick you out, it didn't work. It tell you the mother refused. The family, if a man tells you the family refused, will he marry you on top of the roof? You must quit by force. You must quit by force. If he tell your father too much, my mother is the main thing. Once woman say you know they enter, no first head put. How many have you caught? Is there every product you see in the shop that you test before you buy? Is there every product you see in spa? Do you go to spa and eat the grape small? They test why are you test it? I want to test it to see if the grape is sweet to pay. Where will you find yourself? If you go to where they are selling a focot of beer and begin to test it, because you price it, 
You press the avocado, drop. Me, come, press. The, the third person, will, nobody will buy the avocado. Because by the time we have pressed it, two persons have pressed the avocado beer. What has happened? The breast has gone flat. Has gone flat. Let's check some of these things that some people teach you. I cut for 12 years. I cut for 6 years. I cut when I was cutting for th th 3 years. Well, in the cutting process, what was cutting under? Bible says, He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain favor. By the time you cut fornication, cut everything, good thing and favor have disappeared from your marriage. That's what people stand to do wedding. What their wedding is wedding suit and wedding car. After marriage, introduction of poverty. It ought not to be so. The essence of church wedding is to release blessing. The Bible says the blessings of God make I rich and do what? Add no. How come after your wedding, your trouble began? You have defied the whole thing. The devil has stole good things. He has stole favor. He has stole all the things in marriage and gave you empty abonnement. You can enjoy your soul. You have opened door for the adversary to enter. In the fact, if you don't know Christ, is a different thing. God will show you mercy. But you that know Christ, how dare you? You the court. After you finish sleeping, you come and wait. God, I'm sorry. God will forgive you. A, a number that is lying down on the ground. On which person's body is he lying? Is he lying on my own? Is his skin he's using to lie down? You must learn to walk uprightly. Everybody is doing it. You must not do it. You must not do it. If you have done it where you don't know Christ, now I'm a new creature. I will not do it. My body is a temple of God. I'm a child's virgin. Now I'm in Christ. I will not do it. I can't defy my body. If seeing me is not enough for you, please check the next door. If all the women are telling the men, check the next door. The immorality will, re immorality will reduce. Childlessness will reduce. Delay in wedding will reduce. But because they finished cutting A, testing A, uh, pressing A, leave A, move to B, now you finish pressing A, B, the other person came. See that A is sour and abandon it. Then you give me pastor, begin to enter night vigil to pray. And once you come immediately, you won't go to, you know, you won't go to come down from Mount Sinai and perform miracles now. And when God delay. It doesn't work that way. What took you seven years to destroy yourself? What took you 12 years to destroy your destiny? You want God to change it in one minute. How? Knowledge you got from the world for more than 15 years. Now you are in Christ. Allow your mind to be renewed. You don't want. Say then I hear the word of God. No, you want where they will prophesy. But I prophesy tomorrow you have aircraft. Amen. Aircraft. Somebody is squatting you. Amen. Tell God to give you your own house first before he will give you the plane. I like teaching people truth. He said, no good thing will be withhold. I don't believe in Christianity and practicing wickedness on the beneath of it. I don't believe in it. I'm not wrong you looking smart, looking beautiful, looking gorgeous, but looking seductive. No. It's not it. Another spirit has entered. The Bible said in, 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 in Proverbs 28 verse 10. Let me run now. Proverbs 28. 28 verse 10. He said, Whoso causes the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself. Did you see the Bible? He shall do what? Fall himself into his own pit. But the upright shall have good things in possession. For some of us, you enter church, the one that is trying to be strong in faith, you sway them. No good thing will happen in such person's life. In fact, Jesus Christ put it this way. He said, it's better for you to carry stone and hang on your neck and fall into the river and die. Because the punishment that is coming upon anyone that deceives, or you say what to, to weaken the heart of somebody to leave church, he said that the same pit, the person with worse than the person will fall into it. 
But when you live upright, you see a heart that is fainting, you encourage that heart, you strengthen that heart, you energize that heart, God will bless you. No good thing will be withheld from you in the name of Jesus. The Bible gave us an example of an upright man in Job 1 verse Job chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible told us there's a man from Uz. He said the man from uh, uh, yes, Uz. He said the man, his name was Job. The man was perfect and upright, blameless. A man that does not walk You are not A like this, you are B this way. You are a straightforward person. The Bible says he feared God and he says true evil. He feared God and he says true evil. Now nice. look at that. Because he did that, what happened in verse 10? God built a hedge. Give me Job 110. Because he walked uprightly. What did God do? He built a hedge. The hedge means wall of protection. Around how many things? Number one, he built a hedge around him. Number two, he built a hedge around his house. Number three, he built a hedge around uh, 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 about all that he has. Number four, he, he blessed the works of his hand. Number five, his substance was what? Increase. Why? Because he walked what? Uprightly. You know, those days, when I don't know, I will see some people in the church. I will pray, 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 cry, 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 cry. I will say, God, you are delaying. I will say, no, let me put my hand and help God. There are people that can never be blessed in the church because they are hypocrites. They are in the church, but they are the one that is killing the work of God. They are in the church, but then and they that discouraged the heart is because of the children of Israel that went to spy the land, discourage the heart of other believers. What punishment did God give to them? He said, I will show you the lesson of breaching my contract for you to discourage them. He said, 40 years I will punish all of you until all of you die for discouraging the heart of another. So there are people inside the church that are doing all manner of wickedness. Like one, many years back, a man in the church, many years back, those early days, wrote a, a, a note, a married man, and gave to a girl in the choir. Telling her, please, every, okay, I will do everything you said. If we can see, so so guest her, that, that guest her, please. Right now, I'm ready, to, I'm ready to do everything you said. The lady passed the form they gave me. I read it. I read it many times. I don't understand this thing. How can I understand? I wrote behind it. Please make me understand. I passed the, let, the small distance. And I said, that is what so so person gave me. Wait after service. I will show you all the messages. Him and his wife is sitting inside the church. And he's writing, giving to the usher. So usher will think, maybe it's just important, maybe something good, a respected man like that. Chasing woman inside the church. And we are busy praying for him, for NDDC to release job. Pray, pray, fast, dry, turn to crayfish, turn to bungafish, turn to butter pot, turn to turn to okuruku, turn to everything where you are praying. God will say, you pray and die there, I will not answer. That's why some prayers are not heard. That's why some prayers are not heard. It looks as if God is far, but it's a small, small wickedness that we practice. You have finished, you have no the one outside, you are not tired of chasing them. Now, the ones that Holy Ghost Himself knew that they are rotten, they are devastated, they are wasted, they are about to die. That He brought in so that the world will revive them. Is the one you want to help to destroy. Not only men. So sisters, what they come to church to do is to collect married men. Yes. That's what they come to church to do. Some people are coming to church not to hear God. Though. They are coming to church to look for husband. If you are coming to look for husband, it's not bad. Look where. I like that one. But don't look for another person's husband. It's not a sin that you enter church to look for a wife. It's a good thing. In fact, your eyes are blessed. It's my husband that showed me how to know when a man is looking for a wife. Any woman that passes, he will look. <laughs> I said, why is this man looking like he said, oh, keep quiet. He didn't look for a wife. 
So I don't know. So anytime when I see a man, they look like that. You go look down, look whether they get carry yam for leg. Look where, look. Things as if they hear the word of a yes. Amen. Amen. Once I see it, I say no. This one is looking for wife. So in case if now wife you they look for a good, you know, but look where, yeah. God will bless your eyes to see a good one. But don't look for another person's own. And for eventually you have stole somebody's husband, return the husband back. If you know you still stole somebody's husband, what did I say? Say, oh boy, I steal you. I don't hear the word of I want to return it back. The short man stole. And when Jesus said, This day salvation has come to my house, everything he stole, he gave them back. That's restitution. If you know you stole somebody's husband, package the man back, return him back to his wife. And God will bless you. It has happened here. I used to say, People are laughing. A lady after service, he came to me crying. He said, you say it jokingly, but it's not a joke. I also stole somebody's husband for four years. I said, what are you going to say, mommy? I will return it. He packaged him. I said, the man refused to go. I said, throw him outside. And today she's married. She married two years ago. She told me after what you preach, I was touched. He said, you said the people were laughing that day, but it was not fun to me. I stole him. I returned him to his wife. And asked his wife to forgive me. For another person want to stole him, that is his business. You can't steal another person's husband and want God to give you your own husband. How many men will you marry? Or you are a married man rent a house for you. You are living with a married man. And when I come and say those people that believe in God for husband, you are the first that come out. Ah, you that, that is that is idolatry. You are you're married already with a man in the house. Now you're wanting another husband. No, you have to put out one to have one. Say I hear. So you have to learn to walk upright. The blessing is in is too much. You must not do what everybody is doing. Learn to do what is right. Yes, you used to be a sinner. Yes, I used to be a liar. Yeah, but now I've met Christ. Let your life show for it. Let your life show for it. Let people stay with you and say, Hi, truly this person is born again. You, you don't use scriptures to win your friends over. You don't use John chapter 3 to win your, win your neighbors over. It's your character that win your neighbor over. Your character that win your friends over. Your character, your character. Eh, eh, salvation does not mean I must say. You know, you must look like it too. Because the only way we know you are Christian is that there is a way they were behaving. That is why they gave them Christian, Christ like. You can't be a Christian and be dressing like a Rastafarian. No. There is there is there is a composure. There is a decency. There is a way they talk. There is an obedience. There is humility. There is love. There is so in this. And no, this is non-human. This is supernatural. Tell your neighbor, walk uprightly, and no good thing shall be withheld from you. Number three, sin and iniquity. Sin and iniquity. Jeremiah five twenty-five. Sin and iniquity. Jeremiah 5.25 Your iniquities have torn away these things and your sin have done what? Withhold good things from you. I've read these scriptures many times. Most of the adversaries of the open doors we are praying for is iniquities and sin. Secret sins that we do. Secret wickedness that we practice. Wickedness that we practice. There's this kind of people I discover in life. Don't tell them that they are doing you wrong. They see you as a wicked person. Don't tell them this thing is wrong. Once you tell them what they are doing is not okay, you're a bad person. You're a wicked person. That's not what I'm talking about. Get away from sin. Sin is a killer. Sin cuts short your glory. The only salary that sin pays is debt. 
the Bible said, go, Jesus Christ said to the woman, he said, go and sin no more. Sin bring condemnation. He said, I condemn you not. He make every judgment they pass on you stand. Why the Bible says Romans 8.1 There is not no word condemnation for them that is, there. that is in Christ Jesus. Who is it that shall lay any charge to you that is God's elect? Why is it every time they are pursuing you? When you have power and authority. It's because you are naked in the spirit. In the physical we see you wear clothes. But in the spiritual. And what the devil sees is the spiritual. You are naked. You are a liar. You are a cheat. You are an immoral person. You are a thief. You saw these gods. You take away from people what is not what is not duly yours. You don't make money the wrong way. You don't do that. You don't go into prostitution and come and give money. You don't do that. You don't do that. When you practice war, you don't do fornication. But you say people to men, you are connector, middleman. Bible says Jesus Christ is middleman. Uh, what did he call him now? Um, uh, mediator between man and God. Now you are a, you are a mediator between a shower and human being. A war done. You connect people to married men. You connect people to government. You connect people for immorality. And you feel your end will be better. It can never be better. No matter the offering. No matter the seed. No matter the givings you gave. Am I talking to somebody's spirit? Sin withhold the good thing. Hosea 8.3 It withhold good things from you. So run away from it. Israel has cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall do what? Pursue him. Immediately they start sinning. They embrace wickedness. They embrace immorality. They embrace sin. What happened? They chase out good things. What started pursuing them? The enemy start pursuing them. Most time people pursuing you in your dream is because you are naked spiritually. Clothe yourself in righteousness. Wear the full armor of God. Satan will not near you. Remember, you are a flaming fire. You are not a flame of fire, but a flaming fire. Number four, the things that people do that empower Satan to withhold them. Refusing to serve God and to render service to him. Refusing to serve God. Most of us, we come to church, we don't want to do anything for God. We are so engrossed with our life. We don't want to do anything for God. Job 36, 11 to 12. Job 36, 11 to 12. Job 36, refusing to serve God. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in what? In pleasure. God is interested in pleasures. But if they obey not to serve him, they shall do what? Perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. Which area are you rendering service in the house of God? We have ushering here. We have foundation class baptism. We have prayer department. We have media. In fact, I, would, I prefer people that will even go to prayer department more. We have group that pray for rain of miracle every Monday. Join them. We have the choir. Allow your talent. Use your, allow God to use your talent. He said, when you do, I will give you prosperity and you enjoy your days with good pleasures. The Bible puts it this way. In Ephesians 6, 7 to 8. Ephesians 6, 7 to 8. I ran up. I'm running up. He said, with good will, doing service as to the Lord, not to man. 8. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man do it. The same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be born or free, whether he be a servant or anybody. What are you doing for God? God, give me house. God, make, my, make me to find favor before my boss. God, make them to put my name in the list. God, make them. What are you doing for God? What are you doing for him? 
God, give me, give me, give me, give me. Five years, God, give me, give me, give me. I told God when I was a single girl, I said, the way you have developed me, I cannot marry a member. I can't. I cannot marry a, a worker. You know, there's a way you've developed yourself. Because if I marry two of us, he will take me overseas if they kill you. I just told myself, it's only a pastor I can marry. The only person that can survive me is a pastor. There's a level you will grow in scriptures, grow in knowledge. There are people that you will not desire them. You won't desire them. Me and you will be having problem. My husband, you heard his story how he met me. I came out to give testimony. Unknowingly to me, on that two second, on, uh, uh, without two minutes, uh, is it two minutes or one minute they gave me to give testimony? I quoted eight scriptures without knowing. I was not quoting it for I was just quoting to prove the faithfulness of God. And I finished quoting it. I said, God, thank you because you've done. Without knowing, I quoted them. As I was leaving, my husband was in the meeting to be. He said, This one, Kukuma, let the Kukuma give a mic, make it preach. She has quoted all the scripture I want to quote. And he left. And after months, God appeared to him. That lady that quoted those scriptures, she's your husband. Look for her. It's your wife. Thank you. He traced me from Lagos. I said, they're looking for the people that gave it. Happened that the day we gave testimony, that day we were so many. Immediately he said, the person who quotes scriptures, my pastor said, is, is Beverly. He said, why did you know exactly? He said, she's the one. He went to another person again and asked. He said, it's Beverly. He said, why did you, how did you know? He said, I know. She's the one. That lady is loaded with scriptures. He said, that is serious. He said, because of his small fear. He said, they're catching him. He said, woman, wait, they carry scripture like this. Where I go from start and I'll be pastor. But I'm happy. The fear did not make him to run away from me. Develop yourself. Develop yourself spiritually. Give yourself to service units. Do something in the house of God. He will pay you back. Deuteronomy 28, 47 and 48. He will pay you back. Deuteronomy 28. Because thou servest not the Lord that God with joyfulness and with the gladness of heart for the abundance of all things he has blessed you with. It's me that said that. Give me 48. Therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness. By asking yourself if you are experiencing any of this in a mention. In nakedness, in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon the neck until he has what? He has destroyed the person. Are you serving God? Which area are you serving? What are you doing for him? What are you doing for him that nobody will tell you thank you, only him pays you? I've told people many times I have worked in all your company I know what they pay but I've discovered nobody pays like God the highest all your company can pay you hospital allowance is it also housing is it also a salary but God will pay you housing salary he will protect you he will deliver you he will go with you he will come back with you he will give you food he will defend you when you are not there, we fight your battles for you. No company will do that for you. Once they notice your sickness is critical, they will bring paper for you to sign and pay you, pay you off. But God will not pay you off. He's a present help in time of need. When you are in pain, He will appear and heal you. Say, well done, my faithful worker, because I need you to sing for me. Because I need you to sweep for me. Because I need you to show scripture for you. You cannot go down. Get up and resume back to work. What are you doing for him? What are you doing for him? Give me husband. Give me car. Give me job. Give me motor. Give me lorry. Give me this. Give me children. In short, give me picking. What are you giving him? I have a son in the house. He told me, I vow, I made a covenant with God that as long as I'm available 
all the days of a reign of miracles is that I would be there to make sure the sound is excellent. I say, why? We remember the day he almost died from hospital. His heart locked, everything failed. He told them, rush me to a reign of miracles. They brought him. I didn't pray for him. He heard the altar. He said, this is the altar I serve. I cannot die. And God restore his heart. Make everything in him anew. A wise son. And he paid God back by saying, all the days of my life, I will do this for you. That heart can never fail till Jesus come. Most of us, God have done much for us. What have you done for him? What have you done? Right now, we'll start now. Are you not Deaf ear will open. Door will open. We we'll hear testimonies. Pains of seven years. Arthritis healed. That one. We we'll hear it as usual. Two more disappear. This one happened. What have you done for him? What are you doing to say thank you? Finally, not going for evangelism. Not go you for what? Evangelism. I love this one most. Romans 10 15. I told you today I will preach and teach the things that empower Satan to withhold good things from you. I've showed you not serving him. Now I'm not going for evangelism. Romans 10 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? I'm sending you now. You can go. As it is written, how beautiful at the feet of them that do what? Preach the gospel of peace. And bring what? Good things of good things. Each time you go out to preach Jesus, you tell people what God is doing in the arena of miracles. You are carrying good things. Can you, can, have you seen a container that is carrying this water and water? After you empty this rubber, won't water remain on, inside the container? It will remain. Have you seen rubber that is carrying oil? No matter how you pour the oil and drop it like this, you discover when you start, you notice oil. Try to use the oil rubber to drink water. You notice oil. So too many oils even stay there. There is no way you will be a container carrying good things, a beautiful feet that go to tell people about Jesus, that direct their feet to the house of God, so they will be saved, so wickedness will be minimized in Nigeria. The church slept. What, did, what was our benefit? Boko Haram. The church slept. We enter prosperity. Receive it. Somersault it. Fly up. Prosperity is good. Yes, you need it. But you should not preach one and leave the other. Because the Bible says through prosperity that our city will be spread abroad. You don't preach prosperity and leave holiness. You don't preach prosperity and leave prayer. You don't leave preach prosperity and live fear of God. You don't preach prosperity and live uprightness. They are all the same gospel. We went only with prosperity and the devil entered. We are dedicating cars. We are dedicating house, badges, rejoicing. We said here everybody said around. Now where are the cars? Where are the properties? Some of us have gone to sell it because we are afraid. So a kidnappers will not kidnap them. How can you be in that street and kidnappers are in that street? 